Hello everyone, I'm Antonio and welcome back to my channel. Today we've got a new linguistic adventure in store as we explore the fascinating world of heteronyms. Words that look the same but sound different. Like this one, is it live or live? So before we jump into our list, let's quickly refresh our memory on what heteronyms are. Heteronyms are words that share the same spelling, but have different meanings, and importantly for today, different pronunciations, of course. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Here are 10 heteronyms that everyone should know. Our first word is bow or bow. Now, the first distinction that we can make is between noun and verb. When this word is used as a verb, it's pronounced bow, bow, and it means to bend forward to show respect or gratitude, to bow. When this word is used as a noun, however, its pronunciation differs depending on its meaning. So this is a bow, this is also a bow, this is a bow, but this is a a bow, the forward part of a ship. It's called bow. And of course, if used as a noun, this is also a bow, to take a bow or to bow, as we've previously seen. Word number two is tear or tear. Now, if I say tear, this is what I mean. When you cry, your eyes produce tears. You can use it as a noun, like we just did, or as a verb, to tear up, for example. That song was so moving, I teared up. That means tears appeared in my eyes. But then if I say tear, it means to pull apart, like to tear a piece of paper, for example. Of course, this can also be used as a noun. So for instance, there's a tear in my t-shirt. Tear, tear. Let's go on. Now we have live and live. If I pronounce it live, it's a verb and it means to exist, to reside. For example, I live in Italy. If I say live, I'm using this word as an adjective and it can mean different things like living, something that is alive. For example, I bought live crabs for dinner. That means those crabs are still alive. They are live crabs. Or, and I'm sure you're already familiar with this one, live, uh, when talking about a performance, means that it's not pre-recorded. So if the show is live, it means that it's happening right now. And also if someone performs live, for example, if a comedian performs live, they do it in front of people usually. So live, live. Another tricky word is bass and bass. If I say bass, I'm talking about music, specifically music that is low in pitch. So the bass on this stereo is too loud, meaning the low notes are too loud. A bass is also a type of male voice. So you have tenor, baritone, and bass, which is the lowest male voice type. A bass is also an instrument. This is a bass, and this is also a bass, a bass guitar. But if I say bass, what I mean is a type of fish. This is a bass. We have the sea bass, the striped bass, the rock bass. It's a type of fish. So bass, bass, two completely different things. Now let's move on to wind and wind. We all know what the wind is, right? The wind is air movement. But if I use this word as a verb, it becomes wind, to wind. And it means to twist, to curve. So for example, I could say that the road winds up and down the mountain. So it makes this kind of movement, like a snake. It winds, it's a winding road. Now let's move on. This word can be pronounced wound or wound. And if I say wound, it's the past tense of to wind, which we've just seen. So it has the same meaning, it's just used for the past, of course. But if I pronounce this word as wound, 
that can be both a noun and a verb, and we use it to talk about injuries. So a wound is an injury. So I can say, for example, the soldier's wound was caused by a bullet. Or I could say the bomb uh, wounded a lot of people. And of course, I've used a past tense here, and I'm talking about injuries. Now let's move on to word number seven. This one is really useful because we use it pretty much every day. Um, I'm talking about separate and separate. The meaning is the same. It's just that one is a verb and the other one is an adjective. If I say I had to separate the boys from the girls in class, I'm using it as a verb. So I pronounce it separate. But if I use it as an adjective, like we had to put the boys in two separate classes, I pronounce it as separate, 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 separate. Then we have sewer and sower. If I say sewer, what I mean is a passage for waste. This is a sewer, a sewage system. If I say sower, however, what I mean is a person who sews. So a person who uses a sewing machine. So sewer and sower. Careful how you pronounce it. Now, this is another word that, similarly to separate and separate, has a different stress depending on whether it's a noun or a verb. If I say object, of course I'm talking about a thing. This chair, for example, is an object. But if I say object, I'm using this word as a verb, and it means to disapprove. So if I say, I object, that means I disagree. I strongly disagree, as a matter of fact. So object and object. The stress on the first and last syllable. The last word for today's video is Polish and polish. The difference in pronunciation is subtle, but they have two completely different meanings. Polish, which is also spelled with a capital P, is a nationality. A Polish man is a man who comes from Poland. He's Polish. Polish, of course, is also a language, the language spoken in, you guessed it, Poland. To polish with an open a uh, vowel, polish, is a verb, and it means to clean, to make something shiny. So, for example, I could polish my table, I could polish my shoes with a polish, a polishing substance. So, Polish and polish. The difference is in the O. All right, everyone, now that we've uncovered the different pronunciations, it's your turn. Challenge yourselves by using these words in sentences to reinforce your understanding and to make sure that you never forget them. Drop your sentences in the comments below and I'll be sure to check them out. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more linguistic insights, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Until next time, see ya!